we're talking about you. We're talking about your industry. Where does the government come in? Because you pay taxes. So if you were to advise government, for instance, you have all these laudable ideas, you know, what would you be saying to government at this time? Because they certainly have a role to play. Okay. They tax you heavily. Thank you very much for that. That's a fantastic question. What I'll be saying to the government at this time is, first of all, our institutions are in deplorable conditions. We are practically our own government. I mean, we are, jobs, we are job creators and we're taxed so heavily. Um, policy somersault is a problem. Double taxation is a problem. You just want to get, I, so I want to get a 40 foot container load of tissue paper from Abuja to Aba. The truck, the truck never gets to Kogi State. He pays, he's just passing through Kogi. He will pay for local government papers for Kogi. He gets to Aba. He pays for local government papers for Aba. I mean, it's 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 crazy, right? And I just I I don't understand if you know I I've gotten to a point where I'm pretty much tired of saying something to the government because you keep saying these things and it's like they're just not listening or they're just I don't I don't understand. I um last year during um COVID when COVID just started. We had about over 55 containers of raw material stock at the port for over four months for reasons not known to any one of us. You know, just the fact that Apapa port has, is jam-packed, there is some disorganization in Apapa port. As Apapa port stands as we speak, when they're going to inspect your material, your raw materials, they, they inspect your goods, they're doing, we're still doing physical inspection. In Nigeria of today, 2021, for crying out loud, we're still doing physical inspection. So I have 55 containers. How long will it take to physically inspect those containers? I mean, in other countries, the containers just go through a scanner. So we, we need infrastructure is important. We can't, we can't overemphasize the need for our government to invest in infrastructure. There are a lot of things that I have to say to the government, but I've gotten to a point where I'm, I'm actually tired of speaking to the government because I think they see these things. They travel for crying out loud. They're exposed. They see these things in other countries. Why can't it work? It's not rocket science for us to have scanners at Abapa ports. Apart from Abapa ports, can other ports start working efficiently? In an economy like this, of that is of Nigeria, where factors of production such as power supply is absolutely frustrating, companies like Cadbury, PZ at a, at a time, had to re, as in they relocated their production facility to Ghana and neighboring uh, countries. So as a manufacturer and a CEO of uh, your organization, I have been thriving, you know, in the midst of all the, you know, there's no power supply, you know, and you have over 300 people to... To pay salaries to monthly. So, I, so I, I think what I will say is, first off, believe it or not, we're losing money. We've been losing money, you know, for the past um, two, three years now. Um, but I will say what has kept us, you know, as a company is that from day one, we've been very conservative. Con conservative in terms of our spending conservative in terms of our running running the business generally. Um, we're even conservative with hiring. You know, if I say we have 300 people, um, this is a factory that runs two shifts morning and night. You can't see anyone just lying idle. So it's a place where you have one person doing a job of two, three people. But what I would say has kept us is the fact that we've, um, we've enjoyed, we've also enjoyed some form of um, growth you know, um, we started very, 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 very basic. We started just, you know, very conservative as well. And we took it in our strides. It wasn't like we felt, okay, you know, we're a manufacturing company and just go pull up a and employ 300 people. We did start with 300 people. The manufacturing arm is 14 years going. We started with 35 people. So, but we're very conservative in terms of hiring, in terms of spending. There's another challenge that I see that entrepreneurs face, and that is maintaining standard. <laughs> Um, how, how does that happen? How do you grapple with maintaining mm. standard? You've been in business for a while. How do mm. you sustain your standard? We see it everywhere in Nigeria. They start very good quality yes. and it goes down. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say to the entrepreneurs that are listening, when you maintain your standard, it keeps you in the game for a long time. 
even when it is hard. So no matter how difficult it is, what you just highlighted now, Lolo, people need to know that whatever it will take from the, for them, let them know that they have to maintain their standard. Now, the challenges of maintaining standard is, so in case your suppliers change, you know, um, their products or they have issues. At the moment, I just got news from one of our secondary suppliers that they've run out of material. But again, I'm not dependent on that guy alone. I have another person who also can supply me the same um, secondary material, but is the quality the same? Yes. So what we have to do is having that quality control system in our in our business, that quality control system that checks, you know, even if it looks like it's more profitable for you to give us a substandard, what you should be looking at is the longevity of your business.